What's up legends, LGG Alden here. So I know you're used to on our channel with gameplay and gaming videos and all that stuff, but today I was doing I felt like doing something different. So today I'm going to start doing some tutorials on game development. And if you don't know what game development is exactly, it's basically the creation process to making video games. And which pretty much any game you've ever played, any game you've seen on our channel, all went through game development or is in game development still which is pretty cool so I figured I'd try to make some tutorials on it I've been programming and learning it and doing all that for about a year now so I've gotten pretty decent with it I can't say that I'm perfect or I'm really the best or even maybe amazing I can't even say that because I'm still learning stuff myself I'm still figuring out things that I haven't even known yet which is the cool thing about it because you learn you build upon it and all that but I figured I'd do some tutorials on it for anybody who wants to learn it but doesn't know where to start so what I'm using is kind of not exactly I wouldn't say a basic software but a really good beginners software so I have it's the software that I'm using and I will be using in these tutorials is called Game Maker Studio it's a really good software for 2d game development and everything it can do 3d but it's more it's better known for 2D which there are popular games that have been made with this some have been played on this channel I believe Hotline Miami was one of them Risk of Rain is a game made by it uh I'm trying to think of other ones there are some others but can't think of them off the top of my mind right now so the software the edition that I have is called Professional Edition. It is it's I believe a hundred dollar software. There is a free version. I will have a link in the description below if you want to go and check it out and get it yourself. It can do pretty much everything that I'm doing right here. I think so at least something similar. It should. But if you want to get it and try it out and follow along with these tutorials, go for it. And if you already have the software, then that's good for you and you probably are watching these tutorials because of that so for this tutorial I'm going to be doing just the basic stuff to game development to start it off and that'll just be showing how to make a basic player and as I go on I'll advance to things make more add more to the game work on things enhance and things are bound to change throughout this because that's how game development works but uh... so i guess if you like it if you like these videos if you like this one be sure to comment and like it if you have questions make sure to comment afterwards or in the comments and all that and i'll hope to either do things that you comment in future tutorials or answer your questions and try to help you out but for this, let's just start off. So I'm going to be creating a sprite. A sprite is basically an image. It can be an animation of images, so like a collision or a, a multiple images working together to make it look like an animation is happening, or it can be a still image. For now, we're just going to be doing a still image for the player. Now, if you noticed, I did SPR underscore player. A good habit to have when it comes to using Game Maker, especially is using prefixes so SPR underscore so player is the name of the thing that we're doing but SPR underscore symbolizes the that it is a sprite so later when it comes to calling upon it in development or coding and all that in different spots it makes it a lot easier to find it so for this for game maker it has a sprite editor which you can use to make all your images or you can use other things and you can just load the sprites but I'm just going to be doing it the simple way with this and one thing I am not and will never probably be good at computer art or pixelated art so uh, yeah this it I'll just do as best as I can and I'll wing it and hope for the best so for this the game that we'll probably be trying to make is a top-down game that's 2D of course and maybe it'll be some sort of a killing game going around I don't know we'll have to we'll just build it as we go but for now we'll stick with just the basic features so we're gonna start off with a circle and this will symbolize our player and we'll make him a blue circle okay and uh, here we go give him some eyes 
Okay. There we go. Check our, Okay, so we'll center him. So the reason you center things is because it will uh, help for when it comes to rotation. So if we do make the image rotate, it's good to create images so they look to the right. Because if they're looking to the, usually that's where, if you have like a rotation scale of 360, 360 degrees, so like a circle, it's zero is always facing to the right. So, we'll stick with that, not go into crazy in depth with all the advanced masks and all that. But then here's the next step, so creating an object. So, for these ones, a good prefix to use is OBJ. Usually it's like the first three letters or letters that would symbolize that. So obj underscore and then we'll name it player. Because if you did name it player for just the sprite and then you wanted to create the object name player, it wouldn't work like that because they would both have the name player. So that's why it's good to use prefixes also. But we're going to set the sprite. So you do it right there. And you can also do new sprite, which is another way basically just creating a sprite. So go back to this new sprite. Okay, so we're going to be doing create event. Okay, so adding events, there's all different ones, but the create event is the one that runs in the beginning. So as soon as it is created, it runs the create event, which is usually where you set up variables and stuff like that. So for this, we're just going to be creating one variable, SPD, which would which is going to symbolize speed. We'll set it equal to 5 and one thing that's a good habit to have is putting semicolons at the end of things, at the end of your coding lines, certain, well, the ones that need it, which that's not needed in Game Maker. It'll know, it doesn't, like, it won't cause errors in your code or you won't have to fix anything if you don't add them, but it's a good habit to have so if you do ever use other languages for coding, because most of them do require it, but Game Maker's language, which is GML, doesn't require it so but we are using the actual coding which is the event that I added right here which is called execute code because there is like move main all these ones score so you can use them there this using these features is classified as drag and drop which is basically because you drag it and you drop it in so we could make it so like moving events so you can just move in a direction stuff like that if a key is pressed which when I first used this software I did that because I didn't know anything else and now I pretty much know how to do all this everything that you can do in drag and drop and a lot more just with code so you'll learn eventually. Coding is the best way to make a game with Game Maker. You can make things ten times better than you can with drag and drop. But it's up to you. For these, I'm going to be using the actual code. So for the create event, all we're doing is setting up a speed variable. Now we're going to need a step event. Step events are ones that loop. So every time, like about, there is a speed. There's a room speed, which I can show, I'll show later in tutorials. About changing that and how that affects things but for the speed every time that number is hit which I believe is by milliseconds but I don't know that for sure it's about usually by default it's 30 the speed room or the speed of the room is 30 so every time that number is hit it runs the step events in objects that are created right then so for the step event we're gonna be doing the movement because you need it to move, you can't have it move once, you need it to be constantly moving if you press it. So for this, we're going to be setting up keys. So for, we'll be doing up, down, left, and right, and you can either set this up with the arrow keys, or what I'll be doing is WASD, for most computer games, how they use it. So key underscore up, which is going to be our up key variable, or up variable, will be equal to keyboard underscore and you'll see it'll bring up like a list of things you can use we'll do check direct and then if you want to use the arrow keys so if you want to do the up key you do vk virtual key underscore up and that would be that but what we're going to be doing is the actual letter w for up so you do ord parentheses and then quotation marks W 
another quote, and then close the bracket or close the parentheses. And now you have the up key set to when you press W, when you are pressing W. Now, as you saw, so we'll do the same for key underscore down. But as you saw when you did, when I there was this. So you could do direct, you can do pressed or released. So direct means that it's constantly being pressed. Like it is pressed as in this moment. It is being pressed down. Pressed means that it's just pressed. So if it was pressed once, then it activates it. Released, so the key was pressed, but now it's not being pressed anymore. So we're just going to stick with direct, ORD, and then for this we'll do S, and then you know what, we'll just copy these and paste them and change them. Okay, so then we'll need left, we'll need right. Okay, so this will be A for left and D for right. Now, the next step we need is doing if statements. So, if statements, if you don't know what they do, basically you put if then parentheses and then curly braces or whatever, curly brackets to symbolize what goes in there. But the if statements work, so you set up some sort of a, like thing that it has to check so it checks if this is being true like if whatever the statement in this is then to run the code so we'll do if key underscore up so if oh wait that's dead okay if key underscore up so if the key up which is equal to if the key w is pressed so basically this is checking if w is being pressed then it's going to run whatever's in these curly brackets so for this one now the way we're gonna make him move is because of the way we're doing this it's going to work off of basically like a axis x and y so if you think about it your player would technically is if you were starting at like a zero zero point on a graph so you can go into you could go up down left or right on a graph now for up it's minus but that's to the y axis so up and down are on the y axis left and right are on the x axis now in order to go up on the y-axis you have to technically it's the opposite for this but naturally you would subtract for this you have or for naturally you would add but for this you're subtracting so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do y minus equals so it can run it repetitive so it's minusing to the y and we're gonna set speed so which is called from the create event so speed is 5. So every time that it runs the step event, which is very quickly, and that the key W is being pressed, it's going to minus to the speed, which will cause the player to go up. Then we're going to do um, the down event, <coughs> Sorry, uh, which is going to be the opposite. So adding to Y. Now, this is basically going to do the exact same thing but the opposite like I said and then we're going to have uh, two more which will be left and right we go left and right <coughs> now we need to fix that now we don't want we need the word down so for left and right as I said they're X and Y which X and Y will work off of um, the similar, similar thing except on the x-axis. So x minus would go to the left and x plus would go to the right, which is how an actual x and an x-axis works. So now we basically have the movement, which, so each of these, if the key is being pressed, w, s, a, and d, then it's going to run the code in here for each of these which is moving at the X and the Y and that should be good for now so you click OK when you're done now we're going to need to be able to test it so we'll create a room and you don't you can just name it RM underscore test similar simple as that now you can change the size of rooms you can do stuff with views physics tiles backgrounds we're not gonna get into any of that now we'll just stick with basic stuff 
So in order to add objects, you go to Objects tab, and then you click here, and you select your object. We only have one as of now, but eventually you can choose from multiple. Now place the player, save the room. Now we're going to run it, which is the green arrow on the top that I just clicked. Now as you can see, we have our player, and if I click W, he goes up, D, he goes down, A, he goes left, and D, he goes right. So... As you can see, we can go diagonals too because if you hold both of them, if you hold the two keys together, they don't move. So, okay, so there we go. You can X out of that. And as you saw, this is the key I pre or the thing I pressed right here to run it. You can also do, uh, I believe it's, I don't know, never mind. I don't know what I'm thinking of. So that should be about it for this episode, for this tutorial. And then, like I said, this is pretty much just the basics to creating a player. We will add on to it eventually in further tutorials, make his movement more advanced, change the sprite and all that, and get creative with it. And of course, the first couple minutes of this tutorial was me explaining everything. Now, like I said in the beginning, if you have any questions, comment it. If you want to see anything specifically, any tutorials, comment it, and I'll tell you if I'm going to get to it or if I'll do it in the next episode. And yeah, so I'm going to try to be consistent with these videos and upload every one of them as soon as I can and get multiple out to you as best as I can. And yeah, but other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.